friends welcome back to my channel or if you're new here welcome to your new favorite place on the internet my name is not this my name is bella and i love that i am back here yes that is what i'm loving today you know what else i'm loving i'm also loving the hammering that's going on outside yeah it's Honestly, it really adds to the atmosphere of this vlog and I really hope you guys enjoy that. But yeah, hi, hello my friends. I've had a very tough morning. Okay, let's get, can you leave me alone? I've had a very tough morning and I just really need to talk about it. I mean, I feel like I have so many things to talk about because it is the beginning of a vlog, but I have like so many things in my brain. Like, does that ever happen to you where <laughs> your brain is like, <laughs> like you're thinking of so many things and you wanna talk about all of these things but you want to talk about them all at the same time and it's just very confusing for your brain because you you like you forget how to make sentences i'm sorry does that make sense let's just okay let me talk to you guys about my morning i woke up decided that i wanted to be a little bit productive and try and finish a book that i was reading i was like 160 pages away from the ending and that book was the heart's invisible furies by john boyne i was like i really want to get as close as I can to the ending. I'm probably not going to finish it because it is over 150 pages that I have to get through. Cut to three hours later, I'm sobbing my eyes out. I literally locked myself in the bathroom just in case anybody came in because I didn't want anybody to see me like this. Like they would have literally thought somebody had died by the way that I was crying. Like I was, it was, it was a very emotional reading experience, reading the Hearts Invisible Furies. Like just thinking about it and thinking about just like everything we lived through because we're literally, we're basically following this character as soon as he's born until the end. Um, and it's a very emotional reading experience because I, I have never read a book where we follow a character right from the beginning until the very end and you can see their character progression, everything that they go through, the way that they just grow as a person and the different people that they meet, the different people that they fall in love with, the different people that they hurt and that hurt them. I didn't realize just how attached I had grown to these characters and to this story until I reached the final page and I literally could not suppress the cry from my chest. Like it was such a visceral reaction, I could not stop it. Like I was <laughs> I was convincing myself or I was trying to convince myself. I kept on repeating, this is just a book. Okay, this is not real. You don't know this person. This person does not exist. No matter how many times I said that, no matter how many times I just tried to like focus on different things, I could not stop crying. I could not stop crying and it's been so long since I have cried like this over a book. In my normal day-to-day -day life, I cry like that maybe twice a week, but over books it hasn't happened in a while. And I was just so shocked by how much this book made me feel. Oh my God, The Heart's Invisible Furies by John Boyne. This book, here we are, yes. Um, I would just like, firstly, to thank Moraid, which is the person that sent this book to me and also recommended it to me. This is one of her all-time favorite books and she really wanted me to read it and I can see why. But literally the first thing that I did after I like, you know, dried myself up, um, I went to our DMs and I just sent her, I hate you. I can't believe you did this to me, I hate you, but also thank you. It's a very weird feeling where you like kind of, you want to punch someone for recommending this book to you, but then you also want to thank them for putting you through this. I don't know. This was just a spectacular story. It's, it's such a journey. It's such a unique story and following the life of this person, this boy, this man, it was just incredible. It was heartbreaking. It was life changing. It was mind altering. It was devastating, but beautiful and hopeful, but also so tragic and sad. And it's like, I, I felt so many emotions while I was reading this and oh my goodness, like there are just so many good moments and there are so many things that I just underlined. You didn't even see that. Okay, yeah, there was just so many things that I underlined. Like this book makes you think so much and this book also teaches you a lot about past Ireland because this does take place in Ireland and it 
just goes through their very tragic and dark history which is just very shocking but also it kind of like it hurts even more because you know that this happened and like real people went through this and it's it was it, i have no words i have no words to describe how beautiful how tragically beautiful this book was but yeah so that was my morning <laughs> as you can see i had a very emotional start to my day also just in general a very emotional start to my week but i'm okay with that because if i need to feel this way in order to read more books like this i'm 100 okay with that like yes for sure i will keep dehydrating my body if it means that i get to keep reading more books like this i guess so yeah the hearts invisible furies i'm so proud of myself for finishing this book and that i loved it so much and that i cried my eyes out because oh my goodness that's like the only reasonable reaction that you can have after reading a book like this but now that i finished the hearts invisible furies that does mean that i can pick up this next book yes i am going to be dedicating my days to reading grandmaster of demonic cultivation this is my second time trying to read this book i just realized we kind of match that's a slay hopefully it's a sign that i'll enjoy this book a little bit more the second time around but yeah this is my second time reading it and i really hope that i like it because if i don't a lot of people are going to be very sad and disappointed this is the game plan i'm going into this book with zero expectations i thankfully have a very very bad long-term memory so i don't remember what happens in this book like the only thing that i remember is cringing and just not having a good time like not laughing even once yeah it was just not a good reading experience but honestly it's a very vague memory that i have so going into this i just have a very open mind about what to expect i'm open to just having fun and accepting whatever it is that this book wants to give me and yeah that's kind of what this week is going to be looking like i'm just going to be dedicating my reading time to grandmaster of demonic cultivation and also because i still haven't finished it unfortunately <laughs> i'm also going to be reading demons by Fyodor dostoevsky i have made some progress at least because i think the last time that we spoke about this book i was in page 300 yeah so i've read quite a lot if i do say so myself i'm currently now on chapter nine here we are chapter nine which is page 407 go off chapter 9 which is page 471 i am unfortunately very behind on my buddy read since i did decide to focus all of my reading energy on the hearts of visible furies i have kind of you know let go a little bit of demons but it's okay because now that i finished the hearts of visible furies i can focus a little bit better on demons not that i particularly want to but <laughs> i mean okay listen okay it's just that okay um it is definitely better than it was 30 pages ago no not 30 100 pages ago it's definitely better like yeah i'm a little bit more invested in the story the characters are gaining a bit of intrigue and we're starting to understand what this whole revolution is about and what the secret society or like secret group of revolutionaries are trying to accomplish in this russia that they are living in and yeah we're learning a lot about what they think about people and humans and society and women and it's it's a very interesting set of ideals and values but it's also very interesting to be like in the minds of men that think that way because it's just so fascinating to see men <laughs> it's so fascinating to see men come up with the wildest theories and be so sure that they're correct and that they're on the right side of history it's very funny i have heard that it definitely picks up a lot there are so many noises going out outside i don't know if you can hear that but it's very what's that word like it just interrupts my brain process it's very oh my god what's it you see i don't know how to speak anymore it's very oh my god get that distract it's very distracting yes thank you so much so what was i saying yes i have heard that this book picks up quite a lot in part three i'm this far away from part three which doesn't seem like a lot again it is 30 pages but i'm so close to part three i can taste it 
and I'm just like if I reach part three today I'm going to be very proud of myself but I do need to film another video after this one so we'll just see I'm not going to force myself too much because I've been enjoying the way that I've approached reading in 2024 so far where I don't necessarily put myself like this pressure of reading a set amount of pages every single day like i just read for however long i want to read and i don't really focus on how long it's taking me to finish a book i just focus on how much i'm enjoying said book and i feel like that's a much healthier approach to reading if i do say so myself but uh, just coming back to the hearts and visible theories it's just like it was just so beautiful and heartbreaking and I do. No, okay, stop. I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna start crying again. I can't do that. I can't do that. I'm not emotionally stable just yet to reread phrases of I do. Okay, I'm good. 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 Um, what were we talking about? <laughs> oh yeah, so welcome to this week's reading vlog. I have a couple of books, as you can see, that I want to focus on this week. I also, oh my god, I can talk to you guys about this. Hold up. Look at me, I can stand up and walk. That's insane. <laughs> this is another book that I finished last night. I wasn't even planning on finishing it, but I was just in the mood and I was waiting for Sunny. If you don't know, Sunny is like my bread and butter at this point. She's like everything to me. And she's the person that I'm watching One Piece with. So while I waited for her to get off work or to come back from the war, I <laughs> I just started reading One Piece manga. This is the volume that I was on in last week's video or like vlog. And I'm still in the Dres Rosa arc. Dres Rosa, yes. I'm still there. It's a pretty long arc because we've been here for quite a while, but it's getting so, I mean, it was good, but it's getting even better if that's even possible like i don't know how ola just keeps making the story better and better and like you don't even realize it but like it just there's so much going on the mind of this man wow it's just insane but anyways this is the volume of one piece that i finished this includes volumes 73 74 and 75 and we've met a couple of very interesting new characters and we were also introduced to a new character that i'm really excited about and this volume literally ends on a cliffhanger i can't tell you i mean i can tell you the quote i won't tell you who said it but just know that when that character said that it hurt because i really love that character i want to destroy it all i don't have much longer to live which like what does that mean you know what i mean like what do you mean you don't have that much longer to live like what do you under you need to live for as long as the story goes on i don't understand why you would say that so anyways when i finished this volume i was just very shocked and it was insane it was crazy but i'm so happy that i had the anime to fall back on after finishing this volume sunny and i we just spent the entire night watching one piece and losing our minds over what's going on in Dres Rosa. I wish I could talk to you guys about it, but I do not want to spoil a single thing for any of you because I've seen so many comments where people are like, oh my God, I think I'm gonna start One Piece. I think I'm finally ready to start this journey. And that's so exciting. I'm so happy for you. I feel like this is the perfect year to start One Piece. I mean, it's also the perfect year whenever you decide to start One Piece, but especially now because there's so much content coming out with the live action, with the new anime adaptation that's coming out, which I still don't know how I feel about that. It's like a lot of things are happening in the One Piece megaverse. So it's the perfect time to start One Piece if you haven't already and for those of you who are wondering i'm currently on episode 680 680 oh my god we're so close to episode 700 oh that's crazy okay anyways yes this week is going to be a good week just because i said so and just because i have a lot of exciting things planned like reading good books and watching one piece like literally that's the perfect recipe for having a perfect week so yeah i'm definitely going to be keeping you guys posted on everything that i get up to this week but i just wanted to welcome you to this new reading vlog i hope you have an incredible time or day or week whenever you're watching this and we'll talk later
It is a beautiful day to talk about some reading updates and a very exciting announcement that I have for you guys. I think, I don't even know where I want to begin. Okay, the reading update. Oh my God, I actually have a couple. Wait, oh my God, look at me reading. That's incredible. So my first reading update is very exciting because I didn't think this day would come. I haven't finished Demons, <laughs> but I will. I'm like one step closer to finishing Demons. I am here. Oh my God, look at all that I've read. That is glorious. Can we just... Look at all, look at all that. Look at all that. I love that. That's stunning. So I've read all of these pages and I'm missing this. So I'm currently on page 622. And according to our daily goals, like with the person that I'm buddy reading this, we are going to finish this in one, two, three, four, five days. We're going to finish Demons in five days, which is crazy to me because it feels like we've been reading this for the longest time. But it's okay because it's actually picking up finally like took you long enough but i mean yeah sure like whatever and since i have been feeling my love for dostoevsky diminishing i was like maybe i should read a book that some of my friends have recommended to me and that i've heard a lot of people say that it was just incredible it was fantastic it's really short and it's called white nights it is very short, I read it in one sitting and I think that because so many people had told me that I was going to completely just fall in love with it I had really high expectations for it that just obviously White Nights did not fulfill my expectations that's not to say that it wasn't enjoyable, it was um, but I did just give it like a 3.5 star rating because I don't know, it's like, <laughs> it's like this short story um, of this man that is very lonely and he meets this girl that is also very lonely and they connect through this loneliness and they you know they just spend four nights talking to each other and getting to know each other and sharing their troubles and seeking advice and just finding refuge in each other it's it was like a nice set of conversations it didn't really lead to anything at the end i think the ending kind of left me like oh that's the ending okay sure like when i hit the next page and i was like there are no more pages i was very confused there are a couple of lines that really stood out to me because dostoevsky like the main character he's a dreamer and that means a lot to this person like his entire life has been lived mostly in his imagination which means that he doesn't really have that many experiences in real life and because of that this meeting with this girl is just very shocking to him and it's very life-changing and mind-altering and there are some very beautiful quotes and very beautiful prose but overall it was a 3.5 star reading experience, which is okay. I was expecting a little bit more, but hey, I'm okay with what I got. Of course, it's a clear example of how talented Dostoevsky is as an author. Like, he knows what he's writing about. He understands humanity and he understands the human condition and he knows how to write about it, which I definitely cannot do. So like, kudos to him. He's amazing. Um, so yeah, I read White Knights and I'm currently reading Demons still. And another book that I'm still currently reading is The Dark Interval by Rilke. Rilke is another author that um, <laughs> has stolen my heart just because of the way that he views the world and the way that he writes about the most painful of topics and themes and manages to, I don't know, make me believe in love again, make me believe in life and happiness again. I don't know, the way that Rilke wrote his books and his stories they're just so there are a couple of phrases or just like a couple of quotes that i wanted to share with you guys because they're just really resonating with me so here we go it's gonna be nice it's gonna be sweet i promise i want to encourage you in your pain so that you will completely experience it in all its fullness because it's the experience of a new intensity it is a great life experience and leads everything back again to life i always think that such a great weight with its tremendous pressure somehow has the task of forcing us into a deeper more intimate layer of life so that we may grow out of it all the more vibrant and fertile 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 i've never had to say that word out loud it still seems to me the most wonderful thing in life that the blunt and rough nature of any intrusion and even an obvious disturbance 
can become the occasion to create a new order within ourselves. I just think, <laughs> like I just genuinely think that Rilke has such a way with words. Like I'm not saying anything new, but he has such a beautiful way of viewing life and even the most painful experiences, even the most heartbreaking and life-altering moments in your life, he finds a way to view them or think about them or speak about them in such a way that makes you rethink everything. And I'm just having so much fun. Fun in the sense that I've just had a very introspective reading experience. And whenever I pick up this book, I just become very thoughtful and I start reflecting on my past experiences and how my life has been for the last couple of months. And it's just a nice way to view things. Okay, it's like hindsight is 2020. Now that I've gained a little bit of distance from the whole accident, I can just like, I have a wider perspective and Rilke just has such a beautiful way of like helping me see things differently. It's gorgeous. It's so gorgeous. I'm probably going to be finishing it today because I literally have like eight or nine pages left, but I am so happy that I decided to reread this because it's been such a beautiful experience and reading through my annotations and thinking through everything, it has just been wonderful. And I'm so glad that I went through this. So yeah, those are the books that I'm currently focusing on. I am going to be starting Grandmaster, but I do wanna finish at least one more book before I start another one. And now that I've talked to you guys about my reading updates, it's time for the very exciting announcement, which is that I am currently hosting a very exciting readathon that's called Throne of Lovers. I'm hosting this over on my Discord for my Patreons and my fellow Simpers. It's basically this month long readathon where you have a bunch of prompts to choose from. We have bingo boards, we have reading sprints, we have a bunch of activities to do together. We have a great range of reading prompts. I'm gonna tell you guys the ones that I chose and then the books that I'm planning on reading for this readathon. You know, my TBR may be just like a tiny bit ambitious, but one of my favorite things of doing readathons with my simpers is that we're literally just a group of delusional people trying to have fun and we literally come up with the craziest goals we pick the craziest proms and even when you don't believe in yourself you have a group of simpers that do believe in you and it's just like we're feeding each other's delusions but it's fun and it's healthy and it's not hurting anyone so yeah i just <laughs> i love the sense of like a delulu community because it's so fun it's literally so fun so let me talk to you guys about the books that i'm hopefully going to be reading in february the first prompt that I chose to complete for this readathon is read a book with a morally gray character. And for this one, I chose She Who Became the Sun. I have already read this, as you can see by all of the tabs. And when I read this, I still did like the summaries every 50 pages. So if I wanted to, I could just reread my post-its so that I could get a sense of the story and that way I wouldn't have to reread the entire book. But I remember when I first read this book, I was so obsessed with it. I loved it. Like I was so into this book and I was in love with these characters and this story and this world. The sequel has recently come out. It's called He Who Drowned the World and I really want to read it. But the thing is, like, as much as I loved this book, I don't remember a single thing about it. And I just want to reread it. I want to relive this experience. And I want to see why I was so obsessed with it in the first place so that I can go into the sequel, you know, with everything fresh in my mind. So yeah, She Who Became the Sun is going to be hopefully my first book of the readathon. I'm excited. I'm also scared because what if I don't like it? as much the second time around. I'm always scared that's going to happen when I reread books, but lately every book that I've reread, I've loved just the same or maybe even more. So maybe that's the same thing that'll happen with this one. Hopefully, fingers crossed. <laughs> the next book that I want to read is Shark Heart, a love story. And this is to complete the prompt of read a tragedy or read a book that is really tragic. I actually received this book earlier on this week and it was a lovely gift from Owl. I'll include the clips here now. Flashback. I've been really good <laughs> with my book buying ban, okay? Ever since I decided that I didn't want to spend money on books. I haven't bought a single book. And I feel really proud about that because usually I'm not that good at, you know, self-control, whatever that is. So the fact that I've started this year 
putting myself on this challenge like just challenging myself to not buy things <laughs> so far i've done pretty good so color me surprised when this came on the mail i have zero idea what could possibly be inside this package so i'm pretty sure it's a gift or a surprise but it would be really funny if this is something that i ordered and i just forgot about it because it's been so long um so i thought of course what better way to open this than with you guys and just share it because i am genuinely confused as to what this could be i'm not expecting anything i shouldn't be expecting anything so oh i know what this is i know what this is i did not order this so this is definitely a gift i don't know from who but it's definitely someone from my patreon because a couple of my patreons were reading this uh, let me just unbox it and then i'll give you the backstory hi bella i love your youtube videos and you're the reason why i met some of my greatest friends today i love that <laughs> you built an amazing community thank you hope you enjoy this book i definitely did from Owl, oh my goodness, of course, of course. It makes sense because Owl is the person that recommended this book to me. And that book is Shark Heart. Wait, I should probably take off the plastic so that you guys can appreciate the book. The way that they described it to me, it just sounds like a book that I would really, really love. And I don't know, I'm really excited to read it. I had no idea when I was going to be able to get around to reading this book. But after hearing how Owl was talking about this book on the Discord, it was just like, I needed this. I need to read a book that makes me feel the things that Owl felt while reading this. A gorgeous debut novel of marriage, motherhood, metamorphosis, and letting go. This intergenerational love story begins with newlyweds Ren and her husband Louis. A man who, over the course of nine months, transforms into a great white shark. Owl, <laughs> thank you so much for this. You really did not have to do this at all. But I am so grateful that you did because I'm genuinely so excited to read this. You really didn't have to do this, but this is a gorgeous book. Can we talk about this cover? I love like the green backdrop and then this collection of colors and flowers. It's really gorgeous, if I do say so myself. This is under the dust jacket we love a good gold foliage <laughs> yeah that's really all that i wanted to do for this clip i just wanted to unbox this with you guys now i'm gonna go back to reading probably or maybe editing i have a lot of things that i have to get done today so yeah i'm gonna go do that but i hope you're enjoying the vlog so far and i will talk to you guys in a bit end of flashback owl thank you so much for making my february tbr so stunning and so beautiful like i cannot get over how stunning this book cover is and again i've just heard so many incredible things about this book and this story and just how devastating it is and how i'm probably going to be crying my eyes out and you guys know me, I love books that just completely tear my heart out and make me sob. Like I love crying over books. It's so cathartic. It's such a beautiful experience. It is such a painful experience, but yeah, I just love it. I don't, I don't know how to explain it. I love crying over books. So I'm really excited about this. I cannot wait to start it and just see how I'm going to react to it. And yeah, everybody give it up for Owl. Say thank you, Owl. We love you so much, Owl. I hope I love it. The next prompt that I chose was to read a book with LGBTQ plus representation or just like an LGBTQ plus character. And for this one, I chose our February book club pick for Patreon, which is Heart of Stone written by Johannes T. Evans. I don't have a physical copy, unfortunately, but I will be reading it on my kindle so it's okay we're good we we're ready for this readathon i've also heard that this is a really good book some of my patrons have already read it and they loved it they adored it i think it's like this story about a vampire who hires a human assistant and it's like the relationship between them i'm all for a good vampire romance story okay like you can never go wrong with a vampire romance story except when you do but <laughs> that's besides the point i've heard that this is a really incredible book i mean i've heard all of the books in my tbr are incredible so i do have quite quite a couple of expectations for the books that i've included in this throne of lovers tbr and then also on my kindle i'm going to be reading a volume of yona of the dawn to complete the prompt read a fantasy romance um yona of the dawn i'm currently on volume 36 
I haven't read a Yon of the Dawn volume in so long and I don't even know why. Like I read volume 35, girl, maybe in August. And then I just stopped borrowing them from the library. I think because volume 36 had like a four week wait. And I was like, okay, I'll come back in four weeks. And obviously I forgot. And then I just forgot that Yona was a thing. But obviously I love Yona the Dawn so much. And I think somebody was mentioning it on the Discord and I was like, oh my God, I'm reading Yona the Dawn. So I checked the library and they had volume 36 available. So I also have it on my Kindle. And it's also another book that I'm going to be reading this month. I'm also going to be reading one piece i mean you can't be what's that word surprised you can't be shocked by this if you ever see a monthly tbr from me that does not include one piece that's a cry for help just letting y'all know if you don't see one piece oh this was a gift oh my god sunny <laughs> thank you sunny i forgot this was a gift see this is why i love taping the notes to the books so that i can remember and i can feel grateful all over again everybody say thank you sunny i had completely forgotten i mean i do know that she sent me a couple of one piece volumes but i didn't know that this one in particular was a gift from her anyways it's fitting because we're both watching this arc right now we're watching it together this is the dress rosa arc and it includes volumes 76 77 and 78 for those of you who are wondering on the anime i'm currently on episode 694 so we're really close to episode 700 which is a milestone for me we're one step closer to catching up to one piece which is one of my main goals for 2024 so i'm very excited what else can i say about one Piece? oh this is to fulfill the prompt of read a book with the found family trope which is one of my all-time favorite tropes it just yeah like the straw hat family well, it is a family, yeah. I was gonna say crew, but the Straw Hat family is one of the best examples of the found family trope, and you cannot tell me otherwise. This is so random, but like something that I started to do at the beginning of each volume, they give you like little pictures of all of the main players of the current arc. And I've started to like quiz myself because, okay, listen, I have really bad memory. But not only that, I also suck at remembering characters' names if they haven't been with us for like over 500 episodes. Um, so of course I know the Straw Hats, like I know all of these names. But then the, this is where it gets a little bit more confusing because these I just met like a couple of 80 episodes ago or like 100 episodes ago. So whenever I open a new volume, I like to just see if I can name them without reading the names. And I feel like so far, I've done okay. Sugar, Violet, um, Dellinger? Yes! Oh my god, Baby Five. I'm not the best. I'm not 100% there yet, but I'm getting better. And I just like, I like putting myself little quizzes here and there. I just like being quizzed on stuff. I don't know if it's like the Capricorn in me, but um, I just love being quizzed. So there we go. The last prompt that I have to fulfill for this readathon is to read a fantasy. And for that, of course, I chose Grandmaster of Demonic Cultivation. It needs to happen. Like it literally needs to happen. I need to reread this book. I need to give it a second chance. I need to see if I was the one that was wrong. My expectations were just way too high for when I went into this book. I need to see if maybe this second time around I'm going to love it just as much as my friends seem to love it and maybe two months from now I'm going to be collecting this series like anything is possible literally I have no idea what's going to happen and thankfully thanks to my short-term memory I don't really remember what happens in this book I know it's like this guy does he die and then he wakes up in the body of somebody that's like really powerful or like is it i don't know how i did this <laughs> i don't know how i did this but i like completely blocked this book from my memory i literally don't know why i don't remember this these are the books that i'm planning to read for my throne of lovers readathon once again if you're interested in seeing all of the details all of the lovely lovely details they're all available on my discord you're still on time to join of course the main goal is to just have fun and share fun memories with fellow simpers while we're reading good books so yeah i don't really want to pressure myself to read all of these books this month it's just like a general idea of what i could maybe pick up this month if i'm in the mood for them you know it's just like 
options. We love having options. So I thought I would share them with you guys because I'm actually really excited for all of these books. I've told you guys about my reading updates. I've told you about the very exciting announcement, which I'm hoping that you will also take part in. And now I do have some reading to get done. I still need to read today's pages of Demons. So yeah, that's something that has to happen, but it will happen, okay? It will happen because people are dying. Things are being set on fire. It's a good time. Yeah, I'm gonna go do that now, but I hope you're having a lovely day and I'll talk to you guys later when the construction people leave because this is driving me insane. Like I'm being so brave right now. <laughs> I'm being so brave right now, but this is driving me insane. So I need to leave, um, but I'll see you later. <laughs> days since my last vlog update and ever since then I have finished one book that I wasn't even planning on reading I am very close to finishing another one and I got a package in the mail so I have a lot of things to talk to you guys about the first one is about the book that I finished which I read on my kindle here we go oh it's still there nice so the book that I read was a touch of darkness by Scarlett Sinclair and this is like a series um, and it's based off of a retelling of Persephone and Hades, which is Greek mythology. And if you don't know, Hades is the god of the underworld and Persephone is his wife. But here, of course, they haven't met yet. So it's like their love story. And let me just like, okay, <laughs> like, listen, it's been a very long time since I've read anything remotely close to smutty so this book was like such a breath of fresh air <laughs> it's like it's like you know when you're like really thirsty but you're so thirsty that you don't even feel the thirst anymore so that when you get around to getting yourself a cup of water you're like oh my god i didn't realize i was this thirsty that's what happened to me with a touch of darkness i'm not saying this is the best book that i've read um not even by a long shot, but it was so fun. You know what I mean? And sometimes I'm just looking for fun books, especially when I'm reading, you know, big chunky classics like this. Like I need something to balance all of the philosophy and all of the reflection and Russian 
psychology it's a lot okay so something silly something goofy something you know very smutty like a touch of darkness was just like the perfect thing that i needed to pick up in order for me to be like oh my god i love reading it was fun okay it was fun and that's all that matters speaking of russian literature i have also been reading demons by dostoevsky i feel like okay i feel like this has become my own personal demon as if i didn't have enough already but it's okay because i'm missing this little this is what i'm missing it's literally actually i don't even know it's less than 70 pages which it's still quite a lot but it's less than 700 pages it's less than 500 pages baby girl i know this is really hard for you but can you focus on the book you can't see it you really can't but it has like a lot of cracks and i love when classics look like that because they just look so loved and so well read and a little bit more exaggerated but this is how my count of monte cristo copy looks and i love it and now i'm dark what's this? baby girl i'm so sorry i'm putting you through so much um do we want to focus on anything else thank you so i've been reading demons and it's definitely been an experience but it's coming to an end and it's kind of like a bittersweet experience or like a bittersweet feeling because i have been spending so much time with this book we've been through a lot this book and i so i'm excited to see what i think of the ending it definitely picks up after part three like they were not wrong about that they being the people who have read this book but does it make up for the other 500 pages is what i want to see how i feel at the end of the book anyways now let's open this package which again i've been so good with my book buying ban i haven't bought a book yet so this must be a surprise from who i have no idea but i love you already oh my god it's manga <laughs> i didn't see the covers i just saw like the color of the pages so i know that it's manga but i don't know who i'm starting my campaign why <laughs> Why is everybody campaigning for me? Okay, listen. I'm starting my campaign to get you to read and love Gaiju number no. 8 and Tokyo Aliens. Here are the first volumes of each. Hope you enjoy from Aelor. Oh my goodness, Aelor. My main baby girl. How are you doing? I love you so much. Look at this cover though. Like that's actually insanely cool. I don't even know what this is about. I've never seen this before. Ooh, okay. Okay, wait. Okay, wait. Let him cook. Let him cook. With the highest kaiju emergence rates in the world, Japan is no stranger to attack by deadly monsters. Enter the Japan Defense Force, a military organization tasked with the neutralization of kaiju. Kafka Hibino, a kaiju corpse cleanup man, has always dreamed of joining the force, but when he gets another shot at achieving his childhood dream, he undergoes an unexpected transformation. Oh my god, does he become a kaiju? How can he fight kaiju now that he's become one himself? Let's go! Okay, this is giving Tokyo Ghoul. Kind of. Because obviously he didn't dream about becoming a ghoul, but then he does. And now he has to like be the bridge between the world okay anyways oh my god hold up okay this is really fun i already love the drawing style like come on now i love that that's so fun and she looks so cute i love her already okay okay i am so excited about this you don't even understand okay yes okay i'm gonna stop flipping but i just wanted to share these panels because oh my god okay and then the next one is called tokyo aliens story and art by naoe this also looks very very scrumptious it's kind of giving solo leveling but i don't know if i've just been obsessing over solo leveling so i'm seeing it everywhere but it's giving me those vibes welcome to the sprawling metropolis of tokyo a top intergalactic tourist destination where the lives of earthlings and aliens intertwine nerdy awkward high school student akira is startled out of his ordinary life one day on his way home from buying manga in akihabara there on the train he witnesses a ferocious battle unfold between two strangers with unusual powers Oddly enough, one of them looks a lot like the tall, dark, and handsome kid in his grave. But before Akira can ponder it further, he finds himself kidnapped by none other than an alien. Is this the hot, tall, blonde guy from his class? Is that what we- is that the vibe? Is that what it's giving? Oh my god, there's a guy with an eye patch? That's how you know. That's how you know. That's how you know. Aelor. 
did the absolute most and she sent me these first two volumes of two brand new manga series. I had literally never heard of these before but they sound right up my alley and I feel like I'm already going to love them. So Aylor, you absolute angel, you did not have to do this but I'm so happy that you did. Like I'm not even gonna lie, I'm so happy that you did. February is going to be such a good reading month, I can already feel it. Speaking of manga, I have started two new animes that I just want to mention real quick because they've become like my new current obsession. Oh my god, wait, I need to tell you guys. I finished Dress Rosa. I finished Dress Rosa. I finished Dress Rosa. I've said it in like three different accents. I finished Dress Rosa, my friend and I, Sunny and I, the love of my life, my soulmate, we, we sat down and we did not stand up. We did not move until we watched the entirety of Dress Rosa, like the last, 30 episodes of that arc we watched back to back in one night and yes i woke up feeling extremely tired and sleep deprived would i do it all over again absolutely no questions asked yeah you guys were not kidding when you said that Rosa is one of the absolute best arcs of one piece like oh my, it's definitely up there with any slobby and oh and marine ford of course like come on now um, oh my goodness, like the restaurant was so good, like Do Flamingo, literally everybody was giving. It was insane how well this arc was written and it's like all that just leveled up every single element of the story. <sighs> just like everything was so well done, it literally blew my mind. Sunny and I were losing the last remaining brain cells that we had but it was for a good cause and we wouldn't have it any other way. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, Dres Rosa did that. Oda did that. Everything was just so, like, you don't, I don't know how to explain this. It was so good. Like, obviously I know One Piece is amazing. Obviously I've dedicated quite a lot of my funds and my time to reading and collecting One Piece. So I know it's a good story. I know it's one of the best stories that I'm probably going to read in my entire lifetime. I just was not ready for how good it was going to get. Like if I thought this was an incredible story, I had no idea what was in store for me. Like, oh my God, like I'm just, just like thinking of everything that went down in those last 30 episodes, I cannot even begin to comprehend enough to explain to you how just stunningly brilliant this arc was and how this is like the perfect example of what storytelling should be and should feel like and should look like and i'm just so like if my obsession for one piece was already very severe now it's like tripled by a thousand it's just insane to me. But anyways, I finished Dress Rosa and now we're obviously going to continue on with Whole Cake, which I've heard is even better than Dress Rosa, which I don't, I don't know how that's possible, but I'm excited to see. <sighs> anyways, okay, I need to calm down. After One Piece though, I have started two other animes that are also pretty, really good. Pretty, really good. I've also started Dr. Stone, which, you know, ever since I got the first manga volume from Mary, my other friend, she, yeah, she convinced me to start the anime and it's, incredible it's really really funny it's just as i read in the manga and i always love when that happens so i'm excited to continue with the series and apart from dr stone which is basically like my lunchtime anime and then when i when sunny isn't available for one piece i have another anime that's called creating this was another recommendation and oh my goodness like it was I haven't finished it. I'm like in episode 14 and those 14 episodes I watched in one sitting. I don't- I think I'm entering my anime era. I have been in my anime era but it's mostly been One Piece. But now I'm like exploring different genres and picking up different anime so I feel like it's a, it's a whole new arc of my existence. Character development, if you will. This anime is so wonderful and so good and I think it came out like mid- 2023 it's still coming out i think it's going to have a total of 28 episodes from what i like investigated um researched that's a better word so yeah it's gonna have 28 episodes and i think 21 episodes are out currently and i'm just loving the storytelling like what can i say you guys know that my favorite part about stories and just everything life in general my favorite part is the character aspect and how the author handles their development and their arc and for me like the best thing about a story is its characters like if you don't have good and 
interesting characters, no matter how interesting or how good your story is, it's gonna fall apart because you don't have good characters to keep it steady, I guess is what I'm trying to say. And Friering has such incredible characters. We don't even have that many characters, but it's so good. And I don't know how they do it, but each episode is better than the last one and it keeps you wanting more. That's how I watched 14 episodes in one sitting. I just, yeah. Those are my two, well, three current obsessions regarding anime and it's just been great. It's been a great week. Again, like I'm literally so grateful that I've been having such great days back to back because yeah, that hasn't happened in a while. Like I, I used to have one good day and then the next two would be, I would be in the depths of hell. But now it's just like a constant high that I am living with. So if you're currently going through a bad day, a bad week, a bad month, a bad year, don't worry because you're literally going to get through it. I know that right now that sounds impossible and it sounds like a pipe dream, but you've survived all of your bad days so far. So you're going to survive these as well. I really hope you guys enjoyed this reading vlog. I just want to say, I feel like I have so many things to say, but I just wanted to mention how incredibly grateful I am for every single one of you. I have been replying to comments on my reading vlog and my first video back in 2024 and the amount of support and the amount of positive feedback and just beautiful words beautiful sentiments you guys worrying about me and thinking about me yeah i've just been so overwhelmed by the sheer amount of support and love that i've been receiving from you guys and it's crazy for me to think that that it's real like it's so it's so weird but like i love it and i love you guys so my wish for 2024 and for this channel is for me to be able to give you guys back at least a tenth of the love that you have given me over the last couple of months. So before I get way too cheesy and more sappy than anybody ever wants to see me, I think I'm going to be ending the vlog here. My camera is blinking, oh my God. Literally perfect time for me to say that right when my camera is blinking, but I'm going to end the vlog here. I really, really hope that you guys enjoyed. And if you did, please remember that a like or a comment or sharing this video with someone would really help me out. Um, and it would really help me just keep doing what I love to do, which is make these videos for you guys. I also, of course, have a Patreon where I post exclusive content. I host readathons and reading sprints and a monthly book club with my Patreons. Yeah, we just have a great time over there. So if that's something that you're interested in, the link is down below as always. I would love to have you join my army of premium simpers. But again, it's okay if you can't or if you don't want to, as long as you're here, that's more than enough for me. So thank you so much much once again for watching i really do hope you enjoyed and i hope you're having a wonderful time whenever you're watching this remember that you will get through this if you need to and i'll be here for you whenever you need me so i will definitely definitely be seeing you guys next week bye hey jimmy you nice keep going